I'm local to Oklahoma City. Today, we have a classic 72 Chevy Camper Special C20 and special guest, Zach, the old truck guy. You can find him on Instagram, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Just started, yep. Yeah, exactly. So, Zach, what do we have here? All right, well, typically this is what you'd see if you say you were out at your grandpa's house and it was a truck you drove in as a kid and now finally you get to own it. So, looks a little rough when you first get to it, but honestly, a good cleaning and a little bit of protection um, and you have a pretty cool old classic car. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna go through kind of step by step what you would do. Right, so for the cleaning aspect, that's our specialty. For the protection afterward, Zach has a few different ways of doing it. We also have a few, a few different ways. So how would you normally protect this after we get it clean? Uh, there's a few different products out. A lot of guys go with like a boiled linseed oil. Um, that's a popular way. Some guys go with like just a satin clear coat or a wipe on finish. I just did one of my own personal trucks, which was called a Penetrol. It's kind of an old thinning agent that gives a nice clear coat. So there's a lot of different ways. It just kind of depends on what sheen do you want, what finish, and honestly, how much work do you want to do and how much money do you want to spend? You could take it to a shop, have it professionally cleared, or you can do some DIY options here, which we'll kind of show you. Right. I've done a couple with Penetrol before. That works well. So here we have all clean, diluted 15 to one. And on the surface here, there's all this black, uh, it looks like mold. <laughs> so the all clean will help in breaking that down. Word of warning on these, resist the urge to use iron remover. There may not be a truck left when you're done. That's another thing too. As you start scrubbing on this, realize a lot of this stuff has come with age. So if you really start scrubbing hard, you may take off some of the patina that you'd like. So uh, ask me how I know. I've done it a few times. So just get in there and you really think you're gonna clean it and then all of a sudden you look and you wipe off some of the look that you like. So just be careful. Don't just go scrubbing hard, hard, hard um, unless you want it all off because a lot of the age is what really gives it some character. Some of these little aged rust patina marks, those are some of my favorite. Now this truck mechanically is in great shape. And uh, you know, we looked under the hood, there's new parts everywhere. Seems to be in great shape, it runs well, so. From there, once we have the all clean on the surface and it's had a little time to dwell, we're gonna add a bit of foam. To do so, we have Incredible Suds, 32 ounces of water, one ounce of Incredible Suds, and off we go. far side of the truck has a lot more holes than this side. So uh, you want to be gentle with the pressure washer. Door seals may not be exactly perfect. Uh, you know, so be ready to wet the interior. There's part of the door missing on the other side and part of the rocker panel. So we don't want to go at it too extreme. Yeah, I made the mistake of when I first got into old trucks, I took one through just your drive through car wash. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> not only did the truck get washed, I got washed as well. So yeah. you quickly learn this old rubber isn't quite as tight as it once was in its heyday. Exactly. Now, we have some brushes here. We're gonna use the brushes, they're soaking in the soap to break down a little bit of the patina, a little bit of the mold on there. But as Zach said, we don't wanna get all of it off. And Zach, you're tall enough to reach the roof. My favorite part. 
It's watching it. You can just see it already. Yeah. This white will clean up really good. In, in my experience, most of the whites, they really, if you get them right, they, they'll look really nice when they're done. You can see all the black here. When I take the brush over it, it's coming off oh, yeah. quite nicely. Now, as Zach mentioned, don't necessarily want to remove all of this. I just want to remove part of it. Make sure that it's clean, but at the same time, we're not trying to remove the patina. We just want to level it to a certain level. That's what I'd say. As you go, just keep an eye. Sometimes I'll remove some of the soap, just kind of see what I have going, go back at it, check it a couple times. Like I said, if you just sit here, scrub, 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 you may get to where you have great paint. If that's the look you want, sure. But some guys, they want some of this surface rust to show. That's just kind of the style it gives you with a patina truck. And the brush is soft enough that on the good paint, it's not going to damage it. And on the patina, we're just taking off what we want to take off. And going along the door, like I was mentioning before, uh, you can see the holes in the door where the mirrors used to be. So they've changed out the mirrors. And actually, this vent window is open. Not necessarily a good thing when you're using a pressure washer. Are you old enough to remember vent windows? <laughs> if you're not, they're actually a great thing. I like them. They are, I use a 97, 96 and 97 Fords as my tow rigs, and they both still have vent windows, and that's a nice way to bring some air in. That's, nowadays they're just a security hazard and an easy way to break into a car, but they did have a nice purpose. Yeah, I've got a, a 94 F250 that has the, the vent windows on it, and does a great thing. And they used to have floor vents as well, which you combine those with the vent windows, even on a rainy day, you could get ventilation through the vehicle. It's hard telling the last time this truck was probably washed. I, I would guess decades. It's it, looking that way. <laughs> if maybe ever. Some of these old work trucks, they may have never gotten a bath other than when it rained. No, exactly. While I'm here, I'm going to do the wheels, the tires. Because even though you have a patina truck, there's no reason to have dirty wheels and tires. <laughs> Unfortunately, this truck has period incorrect wheels. But also, that's the fun of a patina truck. They're not always all original. Yeah, this probably would have had some. Big eight lug steel, heavy duty. Yeah. Probably not two piece. We're past the two piece, I think. But yeah, that's what I think would look best. Just a little steel wheel, eight lug. Yeah. I'm a dog dish guy, so I'd like maybe a little chrome dog dish hubcap on there. Yeah, definitely. So there we go. We've got it all scrubbed down. Did you get the wheels on that side, Zach? I got one, one to go. Okay. Front bumper on this, the chrome is in spectacular shape, actually. So next, the pressure washing stage. I took some of the foliage out of the vent. I couldn't believe how white that top was when I was cleaning it. Just slowly, how good this white. Yeah, no, the white is in great shape. I can't so. believe it. Yeah, and even on the, the body side here. Now, we might want to hit this with a brush just a little bit. Yeah, that's what I'd say. As you go over, this can be, honestly, like a couple times to look, see what you got off, come back, touch up a few areas. Again, it's almost like an artistry to figure out what patina do I want? Do I want fully clean? Do I want to leave a little? It's all up to just whatever you want to do. Yeah, 
<laughs> Behind that trim is always a treat. This doesn't stop. No, and one thing I found is the lower the pressure on your pressure washer, the better it's gonna clean out behind the trim. If you're using too high a pressure, it literally just bounces the water out, doesn't get the trim, doesn't get the dirt out from behind it. But with a lower pressure, we have ours set at 1,000 PSI. You don't want to spray too often behind the trim though uh, because honestly that trim is held on with clips meaning holes through the body meaning now I have water inside the door cavities but it's a nice beautiful day out it's gonna dry quickly. Any areas you see you want to touch up? I mean that's as you look like some of this you could probably get in here with a brush and scrub but for me I want to leave a little bit of the age on it just show like that kind of yeah. gives it some of the style is I don't want a perfect old truck exactly it's more important to have mechanical perfection <laughs> than it is aesthetic perfection amen to that Sometimes you open a can of worms spraying down in some of these yeah. <laughs> fenced areas. You get decades of old leaves, snails, you name it. Yeah, and I got a few of those. <laughs> no snails, though. Now on this, we don't want to be taking our best drying towels. If you have an old beach towel, if you got an old bath towel, that might be the best choice but we're also going to be protecting it. So we want to keep it this way and we actually want to make it easier to wash the next time. And that's where Quick Beads comes in. So Quick Beads is our water activated ceramic sealant and just a few little shakes, making sure it's all dispersed. Then we add it to the surface. And I'm putting more than I normally put because of the texture on the surface. It's not a shall we say, clean, flat, pristine paint that we're used to dealing with. And the wipers were not exactly the best back then, so we'll use the quick beads to make the windows bead beautifully next time they're driving down the street. Yeah, that's one of my tricks is I got a handful of old trucks and I, yeah. the windshield wipers, especially the old vacuum ones, Yeah, no, they're, they're good for looks, but for function, no thanks, especially going up a hill. So that's what I usually run is something just to keep the water beaten and run off. You get stuck in a rainstorm on the way to the show or on the way home. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to go. Now this old patinaed surface is actually beating water. Yeah, that's wild to see a paint of this age. <laughs> beating, beating up water, water yeah. yeah. Zach, you wanna give it a try? Sure. So basically what we do is we don't try to rinse it off. We're actually distributing it using the pressure washer. So go from the bottom up and you'll see sort of a white froth. You keep spraying and just move that line of white froth up. Great. have a 1972 truck that wasn't beating before and now it has beating and sheeting on it. I'm speechless. Yeah. <laughs>
It's not something you're used to seeing. So. No, not no. At all. So basically, we've protected it with a bit of ceramic. At this point, we'll actually air dry the truck. Uh, we don't have any old bath towels here, and we didn't find one behind the seat. Actually, in this one, there's a gas tank behind the seat. So uh, back then, they, you know, safety wasn't quite the same as it is today. Now, this grill and this bumper, I definitely want to protect. They're in good shape. They're actually clean. We want to make sure we have this well protected. Let me get this side of the hood while I'm here. Like I said, on regular paint, you'll never be using this much quick beads. But we have a lot more, shall we say, surface area to cover in, in the sense that it's not flat paint. So the, uh, the quick beads needs to get in there a little more than usual. So here we go, we'll get the front end all nice and beady. Notice on this side, we actually have better beading than the other side, so let me add just a little more quick beads. I'll let it sit just a few seconds longer. I'll come back to it after I do this fender. This is a real deal old truck too, as we, my little brother just went and picked this up and we had to chainsaw to get it out. So this is the real deal. We just pulled it from the guy's field brought it in and you're seeing it just as we are. Normally at this point in the video, it's when we remark how smooth and glossy the paint is. It's not gonna happen today. Let's just give it one test. Not bad, it's kind of, maybe 120 grit sandpaper? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know, we got it down to 180. Yeah, 180. pretty smooth. Yeah. <laughs> Next, we get to dry it. Hot air. Hot air, best way to dry. One important thing to note, we want to actually make sure that we've blown out really well behind the moldings, that way there's no rust that can form there. Not that there isn't any already, but we don't want any additional rust. Yeah, that's what's tricky is there's a lot of little clips that hold these on and those are all kind of inlets where water, moisture, dirt can get in there. And if it sits for a long time and repeats getting wet, dry, wind, that's what kind of where rust forms. So if you could get out, you could see a lot of the black stuff that was coming out. Like I said, we don't want to get in there and hammer it, but if we can get it thoroughly cleaned out, that'll keep this stuff fresh, straight, and on the truck for a while. One thing I am going to gloss up with ceramic gloss is that front bumper. It's looking good. I want to give it a little more shine. It has a few little streaks from the drying on it. I'm not worried about it ripping my towel to shreds. And if the trim is in good shape, keep it in good shape. And as well, I'm just going to give the, the window another little pass. Even though you have a patina truck, there's no reason to not see out the windows. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times with these old trucks, the brakes, some of the stuff, they're not, you know, they're not modern day technology, power, things like that. So being able to see, being able to stop, um, th those are gonna be your best friends in some of these old trucks. Is I've taken some test drives where we started with the brake pedal and by the end of the drive, we lost the brake pedal. Yeah, they're not exactly uh, known for their braking prowess. Now this is a 72, it might have discs up front. I know it has power brakes, but. Yeah, this is better. I got a couple old 40s and even, I don't have any old early Ford, but old mechanical brakes, a lot of that stuff. Uh, well, I had a 64 Ford story time and it always had a soft brake pedal and I never really knew why. Well, one day I was driving, I think it was a Saturday morning, early, 6 a.m. in Ames, Iowa. And I had just always added a little fluid to the, to the reservoir just to keep it topped off well. I approached a light, pushed the brake pedal down. I was going probably 30 miles an hour, and the pedal went straight to the floor. <laughs> Not a fun feeling. And then it's, okay, what can I do? In front of me is a gas station and a pizza shop that I don't want to drive into. To the left of me is a big curb and some grass at Iowa State University. So I just flipped the wheel left as hard as I could. It was early, nobody was out. Drove up on the campus grass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got knocked around a little bit. 
Um, yeah, it turns out that's what there was mud that had got up and was slowly had a slow leak in the brake line. And then finally, I actually washed that mud out. And that mud had been stopping and slow in the leak that I made it now that it was a full <laughs> full leak. leak. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, is it correct to shine the tires or not? I mean, a lot of times I, I like shining them up is even on an old truck. I at least like the wheels and tires look good, but that's maybe the old detail guy in me. Well, let's go for it. <laughs> and especially at the back here, they're a nice smooth sided tire. None of that let little siping or anything. So it's very easy to get the tire shine on here. The brush does a great job of spreading it out. You can actually spray it on the tire a little bit. I'm sure the rear leaf spring pack on this thing is heavy duty if it's a camper special. Yeah, it had the <laughs> camper special on it. So dual batteries, extra leaf springs. So Zach, if someone wants to buy a nice truck like this, how do they get a hold of you? Um, easiest thing is just look me up on Instagram, um, the old truck guy. That's just how it sounds, the old truck guy. My phone number's on there. I'm local to Oklahoma City, um, but I travel all over. I have over 50 old trucks, mainly 30s through 60s, um, in various conditions. I have some that run and drive. My wheelhouse is really trying to get guys projects, the old 47 to 53 Chevy, or maybe later on era, something like this. Getting you a project, helping you lead a little bit, give you leads if you need parts, I can get you connections. Um, and then just enjoying it. That's, I have two daughters and we have more fun with these old trucks um, than anything. As we go to a show, we'll park next to a really nice Corvette, Lamborghini and a Cars and Coffee. And naturally, people come over and want to know the story. Is What's the old truck? The young kids want to get in there, take a picture. And that's the joy of a patina truck is you can take it out. You can have fun. You can rub on it. You can bump into it. You can use it for yard work. Um, it's just versatile. It's not your show truck that you just look at and cringe when somebody walks by. These these are fun, you can have fun, you can let kids drive, take pictures and really enjoy them. Excellent, well, thanks a lot, Zach. Yeah, absolutely. And the old truck guy. See you in the next one. Sweet.